was it always your intention to revisit uh, Jake Briggins and Clanton? I think so. Um, didn't know when. Uh, everything is driven by a story, and you have to have a story before you write a book. And for many years, I thought about a sequel or another visit back to Clanton, another visit to all those characters, but there was no story. And so it took a while to get the story. You like writing about the South because it's where you come from. I'd much rather write about the South. Yeah. Because it's, um, it's what I know. It's um, easier at times. The stories are um, richer, more layered. Uh, the characters are far more fun to write about. But on the question of race in that territory, was there still a huge race issue, race issue when you were uh, there as a young man? Uh, I, I struggle with racism every day because of the way I was raised, because of um, I, I was raised in an all-white world in Mississippi, um, and we thought it would always be white. What were yeah. your parents like about that? My parents were wonderful people, but uh, not the least bit tolerant toward black people. And that's the way I, that's my DNA, that's the way I was raised. And it, it took um, a long time to become more tolerant. Is there any way then that you think that A Time to Kill and even this book is about atonement? For who? For Jake? For, for you. For, for the attitudes that you were raised with. Maybe. Because I'm Jake. Okay. I mean, it was all, the, the book was very autobiographical. A lot of white people of my generation from the Deep South um, still struggle with racism and trying to overcome it. I think we're all racist, okay? Mm. In what way? Just different levels. We prefer our race and we're, quick to, we're quick, quick, quick to condemn others. We're quick to look at life through colored glasses. And it's there's certainly different levels of it, but it's um, still difficult for me many times. And how does that manifest itself? Well, um, stereotypes. You expect uh, certain things out of certain people. You see um, a gruesome crime. You see the suspects arrested, and it's, they're two black punks who killed a white businessman. And instinctively, you think, okay, they're guilty. You know, um, there's a level of tremendous dislike, you know. And then you, you get past that and you say, okay, well maybe they're not guilty, they're presumed to be innocent, maybe the cops have got the wrong people, which happens all the time. Maybe um, you should try to understand where they came from. They probably never had a chance. They were probably born on the streets, raised on the streets, probably never were taught right from wrong. You know, so you, your initial reaction is to react negatively. Uh, to many situations, and then you know you have to work through it. Do you think that the election and re-election of President Obama has fundamentally changed things for black people? I don't know. It's it's changed things for black people because there is such an enormous sense of uh, pride and almost disbelief. Um, on the part of most black folks when he got elected. They never thought it would happen. We didn't, no one would have thought it would happen 10 years ago. Um, the downside is that a lot of black people thought that change, you know, we'd finally arrived at a certain point and change was gonna happen overnight. Um, but then the expectations were so high that no one could ever achieve those expectations. You have been quite critical of President Obama. Why? Oh, I think I'm critical of every U.S. president. <laughs> same way, same but this, way. But you, you, one of the criticisms was you said that he kind of, he, he, he cared too much about celebrity rather than getting down uh, and doing the office job. Yeah. The guy spends way too much time out of the office, um, too much time on the golf course. He, he really, all he wants to do is make speeches. 
um, and he doesn't have the stomach or I think the talent for the really nitty gritty, rough and tumble, hardball infighting it takes to survive and succeed in Washington. If Obama had been white, he would have been elected. If you take a freshman white senator from Illinois or anywhere else, put them in the U.S. Senate for a couple of years, look at their track record of almost no accomplishment, throw them in the race, he would have gone nowhere. But a lot of people, and I, again, I'm not, I guess I'm, I'm being super critical, but he's a very smart, intelligent, savvy politician who arrived at the right time. He was black at the right time. He caught the imagination of the American people at the right time. We were so disgusted with Bush Cheney after eight years, we would have voted for any Democrat, okay? Most of America would have. And Obama came along, his timing was perfect. Have you talked to Hillary Clinton about running? Not, uh, you're not seriously. But you're a backer. Oh yeah, sure, sure. I think she's, um, I think she's a shoe in to get the Democratic nomination because no one has ever seen poll numbers like she has right now three years out within the party. Now, who knows who will be nominated by the Republicans, but within the Democratic Party, uh, she's at 70% and no one has ever seen that before. And eh, nobody else obviously comes close. Um, and I don't think she's gonna turn down the chance to be the first uh, female president. I think she'll run. She'll get the Democratic nomination and beyond that, it's crapshoot. John Grisham, thank you very much. Indeed. My pleasure. Always fun.